uh, driving in the neighborhood. What do we do? How do we share information? How do we become safe drivers? And this is the thing I need you to remember when you're out here driving, neighborhoods are the most dangerous place. Why? We tend to let our guard down. We we take off our seatbelt. We tend to eat a bunch of food. We're driving really fast. We're driving with one hand. So I need you as a driving community to really be safe. And that's extremely important. So let's go ahead and keep it moving. What are we going to do today? We're going to talk about you make legal right turn safely. How do you make uh, legal left turn safely? What are the risks of driving in the neighborhood? Do I uh, still need the SEE to be safe? A safe driver? The answer is yes. Let's go ahead and move to the next one. Risk of neighborhood driving. Number one, there are other cars. People are parked on the left, on the right. They're backing out. They're pulling in. They're not paying attention. You as a driver need to be safe. Let's talk about school buses. School buses have a particular danger because kids are coming out of the home. They're excited to get on the bus and they're not really paying attention. So you as a driver, you want to be safe. You want to be consistent and you really want to be aware of the situation. Let's talk about joggers. Joggers are there. They're, they have a right to the road, just like all of us do. Some run on the sidewalk. Some of them run with the flow of the traffic. Some of them run against the flow of the traffic. It's really important that you give them room, you give them space, and you take your time. Let's talk about children. Children are very unpredictable. They really think the driver's air car or regular car or any car, it's a monster with the big grill and the headlights. You need to give them space. You need to make eye contact with them. And you need to make sure they are truly aware when you come into their domain because they tend to think, I'm the only one in this world and nothing's going to hurt me. So you have to be aware. Let's talk about pets and their owners. I'm a pet owner. I have a dog. Uh, we do keep her on the leash. Uh, pets are very unpredictable. They could see another dog. They could see a squirrel. They could see a rabbit. A stranger could come up and they could just run off the leash. It's happened. Trust me. Um, so you re really want to assume that the animal is a little bit nervous. Give them room. Give space. Make eye contact with the person who's walking them. Make eye contact with the driver. So those things are extremely important because you want to be aware of them. So let's look at this picture that is up here. We have a jogger. They're in the middle of the intersection. Give them room. They can have uh, headphones in. We have a bicyclist uh, to the right, upper right. Uh, they may not be paying attention. Uh, you always want to make sure they see you, hear you, make eye contact with them, give them room. You have kids. Kids are the next biggest hazard with their parents. You have to take your time. You have to be patient. And you never know what is really going on. And then, of course, you have the pets. And then you have the kids. And they should always be uh, escorted with an adult. Let's go into the school buses. School buses, what are the risks? Well, number one, we got to watch out for them. Children may be thinking about getting to school, but not uh, getting there safely. They're excited. They want to see their friends. They're not thinking about a car. They're not thinking about the dangers associated with that. You are the young adult. You are the adult. You have to anticipate them running out in the middle of the street. You can't get mad at them. They're kids. You are the adult. So you've got to take your time, back off that gas pedal, start being a defensive driver, covering the brake, and slow down. Children may be playing their bus stops. Right, that's the exciting time. We all remember we were little at the. And there's your friend. You're showing them this. You're showing them that. Uh, they're probably watching driving with miles. <laughs> Children may be arriving late for the bus or crossing the street without looking. Again, you're running out. You got your food. You got your homework. Your papers flying out of your binder. You're trying to get to that bus. You've got to learn to be patient, back off, and anticipate. Look between cars. 
look for little feet running underneath or near buses. Be that defensive driver. Let's talk about school buses and uh, legal driving. Learn flashing signal light system. Use on buses. There's a yellow and a red flasher. You should know. You have to know what these mean. Yellow uh, is a warning. The bus is preparing to stop to load or unload kids. Drivers should be slowing down and preparing to stop. Why are you driving 25 through the neighborhood? Why are you in a hurry? If you see that yellow light, your foot should get off that gas. You should start covering that brake and slowing down. Red lights, extended stop arm. You see that? You're stopping. And that's at least 20 feet, whether it's on the left or right. If it's a divided highway and there's a physical barrier, you're good. If it's undivided, you have to stop. Drivers must stop at least 20 feet in the back or the front of uh, the divider to be ready. Failing to stop may uh, cause a driver to get three points, that's a citation, or a $250 fine. You don't want either of those. And if you disobey the law, all the kids have little cell phones, all the soccer moms have cell phones, all the dads have cell phones, they're going to get your license plate. So you might as well just follow the rules and slow down. Let's talk about school zones. What are the risks? What are the potential risks of school zones? You have distracted children. They're thinking about school, thinking about getting into class, doing the homework, doing their 3D modeling, uh, doing swimming, right? Meeting with their friends. School is very important for our young adults. It's a place for them to socialize, show their creativity, and be themselves. Next, you have distracted parents. Parents are on the phone. Hey, John, did you see my son? He dunked on you. Yeah, I saw it, but my son sat a three-pointer in your son's face, right? So parents are talking all the time. So you as a driver, be that defensive driver. Slow down because after 10 or 12 tardies, you're going to lose credit if you're a high school student. I'm saying this because it's true. So leave early. The number one reason why people speed is because they are late. When Now, in some areas, you have a school zone warning sign, which is yellow and black, yellow background, black letters or symbols. In this case, it's a, a smaller person and a bigger person. And then on the, top, on the bottom of that, you have photo enforced. They're taking pictures. In some states and provinces, they take pictures. So if you're speeding through, they'll clip, take a clip of your license plate. You get a ticket coming home. So slow down. You see the middle picture. There are kids, parents dropping them off. They're halfway asleep. Mom's not dressed. Dad's not dressed. The kid's not dressed. You have to slow your roll, leave space, look left, middle, right, look left, middle, right, scan, look around. The last one, school zone, speed limit. Now, in some school zones, there are 15 miles an hour. That's right, 15. And between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m., you got to be going 25 or 15 or 10. Reduce your speed. Be the defensive driver. This is a high priority area for a young driver speeding through, trying to get to school, trying to get home, trying to get to the job. And the police did are just reeling you in just like catching fish. Slow down. I should say catching drivers. Let's talk about school zones, safety, and legal driving. Uh, speed limits is never more than 25 miles an hour in a school zone. Some school zones are 15. Many school zones throughout the state are monitored by speed cameras because the number one priority is kids. A driver's license is a privilege, not a right. It can be taken away. So I really need you to understand this. Drivers must yield to pedestrians in the cross and follow directions of the crossing guard. Your crossing guard is a traffic control person. Crossing guard police officer, construction worker. Those are a few of your traffic control people who control the flow of the traffic. If you can see the picture to the left, the person is out, they have a stop sign. So that stop sign tells you that they are telling traffic to stop and uh, the pedestrians 
can walk across safely. Next, you have those speed limit cameras. So if you're going above a certain speed limit, you're going to get a nice ticket in the mail. And no one wants that. Let's talk about bicyclists, risk. New bike riders may not uh, know how to be steady or stable. And I want to add to this. We have these e-scooters. And there are a lot of people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s riding these e-scooters. And they're very fast. They go over so over 20 miles an hour. And people are not safe. They are going too fast. They will do face plants. They're not looking left and right. And they're not yielding for cars. Riders who may not be playing in the street, riders who may be playing in the street and not paying attention, they're having fun with their friends. Well, I remember one of us like, when we were little, you're not worrying about anything. You're having fun. Be safe out there. Bicyclists, safety and legal driving must not pass any closer than three feet to a bicycle or scooter. Give them room. Must yield to the bicyclist riding in the bike lane and shoulder when entering or crossing occupied lanes of traffic. There's a specialized lane that is for bikes. There's a symbol of a bike. You can't, as a motor vehicle, drive in that lane. Give them room. Um, failing to yield a right of way for a bicyclist, which results in a crash, may uh, be resulting in a 1,000, excuse me, a 1,000 out of fine or three points. Both are dangerous. Plus, you could end up injuring someone. And you should always wear your helmet. Let's talk about pedestrians. Pedestrians, safe and legal driving. I like the word safe and legal. They go together. More than 3,000 pedestrians crash annually. That's crazy. 3,000 people, broken bones, injured. More than eight, more than 80,000 excuse me, more than 80% of crashes involve a serious injury or fatality. A fatality is when someone dies. That is an unnecessary death if you simply follow the rules. Most pedestrians relate crashes occur in urban areas, downtown Detroit, downtown Chicago, um, Houston, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. These huge metropolises have Thousands of people walking. Some are following the crosswalk. Some are not following the crosswalk. You have to expect the unexpected.